most of my hand carving. I do all my turning at the lathe there, but I spend much more time carving these days. The big burls that I've made into bigger trees, there's a lot of work done away from this table, but all the final work is done with it sitting in my lap because you have to be able to move it constantly to different orientations. So this is a small example of what I have to do when I'm going to make a tree out of a, a, a burl. This is a red mallee burl. We've got the red heartwood, the white sapwood. It's a funny double shape. And if I'm trying to decide what I'm going to do, I'll look at it from all the different directions. But this one's very obvious that that could be a canopy. That could be the branch. I band saw it across the bottom and I'd have a base. Narrow down the trunk, carve away the branches at the back, and that'll become a nice little tree. The smallest one I've made is this little tree. I've never made one that small before and I think I'll do more now. So I'm only working with really tiny tools. Sometimes I use die grinders and things like that for the bigger ones or architects. So I have a little micro motor carver here and this is a kind of miniature version of what I would be doing with the big ones. So I'm just going to pre-carve this, it's still very rough. What do you said you just remove all the bits that don't look like what you want to make. So uh, I work by instinct, I don't have a design in my head, just a rough shape, because the burls won't allow me to impose a design on the wood. The burls will only let me do what they're already shaped like. So I don't have any drawings. And I'll keep refining and thinning down and thinning down. See that trunk's too weighty, I'll, I'd like to reduce the trunk a bit more. I've got some root forms. So there was some kick out there from the rough carving. Gradually refine the root so it's suggested that it's in the soil as you see in real life. Reduce behind it on that side to make it a little more proud of the surface. Underneath is hollowed away because that reduces the chance of it cracking while it's drying. And you can see here the difference between the sapwood and the heartwood. The sapwood from the front, that looks like the banks of a stream, in my imagination. This is still a bit dirty. You can see some rough pen, uh, pen marks where I've suggested to myself where I might carve the holes. The holes are so I can see glimpses of the tree through there. Through there. Uh, so I will sandblast this canopy later and that will become creamy coloured like this here. No further treatment. So I've carved away through all the heartwood that I've got for the sapwood. Still a bit thick. I might thin it out a bit more. I don't have to, but I like the sense of fragility. A good gee whiz factor there. So there's some kick out, so I'll get rid of that kick out there. And I'll probably spend about another four hours carving that. So you can imagine when it's 60 centimetres wide, we're talking two days carving it. Uh, and then I'll get to the stage of sanding it. Now obviously with something like this that I thought of for myself, and I'm pretty confident that nobody else in the world is doing this, I don't always like showing everything about how I make them because I like them to be my territory. But this is something that is in the public domain. A lot of people use this system. I originally found it out about it from French friends. Lots of French people do it. They call it the mouche, which is the fly. And it's a split pin which you can get from jeweler's supplies and it's in the flexible shaft of, in this case, a Weecha, which is the latest Chinese version of all those various kinds, Dremels and Fordham's and so on. And I cut different pieces of, I use Velcro back paper because single sheets of paper tend to slip out of the pin. The Velcro backing actually makes it easier to grip and I put it in the split pin so that about three-fifths of it is on the side that's rotating that way and that leading edge as it comes around will flap sand the piece. I use the pedal so I don't do it too fast and this is the way I sand the tree branches and all those hard to get to pieces. And to give you some idea of how long it takes, that piece has already destroyed itself. I throw that away and I go to the next piece. And I will go through from 120 grit through to 600 grit. And that process will take me on a hardwood like this 
maybe five hours to get it to the glossy finish that I want and then that's followed by hand rubbing for several hours too. So it looks like a simple quick way. It's simple but it sure isn't quick.